Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. Regis Progre, Jack Catterall, and Devin Haney. What's the relationship between the three? Now, there is an inextricable connection there <clears throat> and a thread that kind of brings them all together. Regis Progre, <laughs> listen, I, I don't know what direction Regis Progre, what his career is going. But he feels that the momentum with Catterall is going to put him back in uh, the space where he wants to be, which is to go on and become champion again at 140. Um, I don't know how many believe that Regis Progre has anything left after seeing him <clears throat> get dropped by Devin Haney and get wobbled by Devin Haney. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I was surprised Devin dropped him. I was surprised Devin wobbled him. I wasn't surprised Devin beat him because I just figured the reach, the speed, the boxing ability that Regis would just struggle because Regis had struggled against Zoria when Regis had his uh, homecoming fight there in New Orleans. But I think something was taken out of Regis, but it makes me wonder, right? Because Regis is talking about how boxing is a corrupt sport. He, he It sounds like he believes maybe Devin... He had a little cocktail in his system, right? I understand when it comes to Snack and Victor Conti. Look, I don't trust them as far as I could throw them. I'm being honest with you. But I, but I also understand... What if Regis Progress is right? Devin is a hypocrite for condemning Ryan Garcia for cheating when, in fact, he cheated against Regis. Now, the difference here is Ryan tested positive. Devin did not. In addition to that, I think Regis is looking for excuses to justify his loss against Devin. Talked about Devin's weight etc. But if he's living in delusion about his loss to Devin and he's really buying 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 in on the idea that Devin cheated him, Regis Progress is gonna be in trouble when he gets in there with Catarrell. Let me tell you something man. Catarrell, 29 to 1 13 KOs. Does he have serious knockout power? I'd say no. But Catarrell can fight. Um, in his last three fights, he got victories over Jorge Linares, you know, Josh Taylor in a rematch, which many people believe he should have won the first one, and uh, Derob Foley. But but the, the bottom line is this. I, I honestly don't think Regis Proger gets past Catarrell. Because it sounds to me like he hasn't even gotten past the Devin Haney defeat. <sighs> you you have to be mentally healthy, man. And your mind has to be clear of any distractions. And I think the fact that he's still kind of looking for excuses as to why he lost to Devin, I think that, that creates a bit of a mental block. And I think it's going to preclude him from being able to perform to his potential. Now, he, he can go on and say as what as he wants, man. Uh, you know, uh, Catarrell, yeah, he's a decent fighter. Uh, but when he comes out here and and saying that he's not on his on his level, well, what level is Regis Progre on today? Not the Regis Progre that fought Josh Taylor, but today, right now. What what level is Re does Regis Progre think he's on? That's my question to everyone out there. I like Regis, the Rougarou. But I think he's taking it to the stupid because he, he feels he's on a level on some kind of plateau that Catterall isn't. And I think he's going to get a wake-up call when he gets in the ring with Catterall uh, and Catterall puts the bing-bings on. Now, being a decent fighter is a backhand compliment, in my opinion. Catterall is more than a decent fighter. Regis Progre today is a decent fighter. So if you're going to say Catterall's a decent fighter within Regis, you got to describe yourself as a decent fighter. 
You're not great anymore. You haven't, that Devin Haney fight, you didn't look great at all. You look lost, actually. Against Zoria, you didn't look great. You look lost and you lost that fight. So for Regis Perga to come out here and keep talking about fighters aren't on his level and he's supposed to have self-belief. He should feel good about himself. No one's going to love you like you love yourself. But at the same time, you can't come out here and take it to the stupid and now you're out here believing you're something that you aren't anymore. That's like me. I went and ran yesterday. Uh, we ran with three miles with my sons. They came home from school. They wanted to go. I, I make two of them go run because they they bullshit with playing sports. I'm like, all right, well, daddy go train you. So um, we got out there to run, my 14-year-old, 12-year-old, and 10-year-old. And running them hills that I run, they, they were gone, gone. And I was like, shit. But I had ate a big-ass thing of rice and curry chicken and shit. I never run with that much food on my stomach. So anyway, going up that hill, I wasn't tired. I just had to take my time breathing because I had all that food on my stomach. But coming back, I almost caught their asses. Then they looked over the shoulder like, oh, shit. But the thing is, my three sons beat me. And that kind of felt good because they, they sprint the whole goddamn two, two and a half miles. They sprint that shit. And I'm like, yeah, them boys in shape. And I'm... On the way back, I was sprinting, but I, I can't sprint the whole thing like when I was younger. So, so what I'm getting at is, I believe that I still can do the things I used to do when I was fucking younger. And when I'm out there with my sons, we're having fun, but there's some, some competition there. And I'm like, ain't no in the world, I'm gonna let these little motherfuckers beat me. And my fucking 10 year old blazed me. But them boys can run. Like I said, they've been playing sports since they've been young. A lot of, uh, a lot of running, they're well conditioned. I'm fucking sprinted up that hill, man and back. So again, the belief that I can still come out here and perform at a level like when I was 160 pounds, 80 pounds, 205, I'm 260, right? I used to run a mile and a half in fucking seven minutes and like 16 seconds. Okay? Then when I got slow, like 830 something, then 916, then 1020, then 11 something before I got out of the military I think I was around 12 minutes but right now I can't do that you know I'm not running a mile and a half in no fucking 12 minutes I can get a mile um, when I run up that hill I don't know that's a little over a mile but I do it in like thir 12, 13 but I, I'm not bad but I'm not what I was plus I'm not that light anymore I'm a lot bigger but for Regis Prograde <clears throat> the same thing he just doesn't look like the guy he once was because he's older now and not as active and life is good. Sounds like he invested his money well. He's, he's just, he's not that guy. So he can believe what he wants, but I think he's going to get the real, the wake up call because if he's looking at, this is the problem with Regis Progre. When it comes to Caterall, he's looking at how Caterall performed in that first fight with Taylor and how Caterall performed in the second fight with Taylor. And he's saying that they were close fights. Even though he felt Catterall won the first. But Regis is like, but my fights with Taylor were, I won the, that, that fight. He, he still feels that he did enough to win. And since he beat, in his mind, he beat Josh Taylor. And Catterall didn't decisively beat Taylor. Then he should beat Catterall. Let me tell you something. Regis, after this fight, is going to feel like, the referees and the judges owe him, owe him the victory. And he's going to be saying the same thing, that I really beat Catterall, even though he's going to lose. When in fact, he's he, he's going to lose the fight. When he fought Josh Taylor, he lost that fight. He lost that shit. Okay? When he goes up against Catterall, I, I just have a feeling he's going to lose. I want him to win, but I'm listening to him talk. I'm like, man, it's just it's not good to sound like that. Where, where is his team that's going to sit down and actually be real with him and say, hey, this belief that this guy is beneath you, get that shit out your mind. You need to purge that from your mind immediately. This guy is a serious threat. He's a serious problem. You want to get back to the goddamn land of riches and gold and eating all these great food and living this lavish lifestyle. Well, this is the guy that's blocking on it. He's going to prevent that. So if you can't come out here and clip him, and all this shit that you talk about what you want to do and where you how you who you believe you are in the 140-pound division, you're never going to get an opportunity. Regis Progress can't afford to lose, people. 
You see, Tim Zhu just lost. I think he has a two-year setback of really getting back to any opportunity for a title shot, the way he got beat. But Tim Zhu can go back to Australia and make real money because he's a star and fight locals and beat the shit out of them and the Aussies will be oi, 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 happy, happy, uh, and, and, and celebrating Tim, Tim Zhu. Regis Progan can't lose and then come back to the States and have a bunch of tune-up fights and people getting behind him. No, he loses. Eddie, Eddie Hearn don't want him no more. If he loses, Eddie Hearn's not going to sit there and continue working with him. Eddie Hearn drops Subaru Matias. Eddie Hearn trying to get rid of Montana Love. Eddie Hearn ain't going to keep uh, Regis Progre. Eddie Hearn is looking to cut the fat, trim his roster. He only wants guys who can win and put butts in the seats. Regis Progre is not putting no butts in any seats. And the second thing is, he hasn't really won a fight. That Zaria fight was a fluke. Eddie Hearn knows that. Devin Haney fight was a goddamn disaster. Eddie Hearn knows that. And going up with Catarrao, to me, he's teeing up Regis Progre so Catarrao can come and hit a grand slam. That's what I believe. And we're going to see, because he can sit there and question Jack Catarrao's resume all he wants uh, and say he don't see nothing there. Well, I think he's going to see a whole lot when he gets in that ring with him. And uh, the problem is he's not seeing it now. So that tells me he's not pro he's not preparing the way he should because I see a whole lot of great things about Jack Catterall that I haven't really seen in Regis Progre in his last couple of fights. And I don't like to hear him talk like that, man. So it is what it is, man. But I believe that I, I believe it is that uh, that the momentum right now. I think Catterall has the momentum, man. And um, while the emphatic nature is Progre a Progre lost to Devin Haney in December, during which he was uh, clipped, I think it was what about a third round. I think it may have contributed to, 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 to some believing he's on the wrong side of the hill. And I tell you, I, I, think, I think Regis is on the wrong side of the hill. That's just my opinion. But does he beat Catterall? Even if Regis progress at his best? I don't know. Right now, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Some people peak and they can hold it there for the next three, four, five years of their career. I think Regis progress beyond his peak I think he's on a decline. Um, and I think that stuff matters. But if you listen to Regis Progre, he'll tell you it doesn't matter. Again, another reason why I think that when it comes to Regis Progre and his career at this point in time, I just think he's I think he's delusional, man. But he at 35 years old feel he's he's just now reaching his peak. You go out and look at the studies they've shown. Most guys involved in combat sports. By 32, 33, they peaked and on a decline, and that's when they should be looking at retirement. For Regis, I think he's now peaking at 35. He's effing delusional. He said he he, he, he overworked because he wanted to beat Devin so bad that he did too much. Excuses, man. And to hear him now talking about how he's peaking at 35, delusional. If a fighter starts getting better, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, they're getting faster, stronger. I want to know what the fuck they're eating. You know what I'm saying? Because that's just not how that's supposed to work, people. I don't know how good your genetics are. You watch Terrence Crawford. Outstanding genetics. Watch Terrence Crawford. Even he's slowing a little bit. There's some slippage there. You just don't keep getting better year after year. At some point, you can hold it, but you start to decline. I think Regis Progress is declining, man. Uh, but anyway, he's on the road looking to face Catarella Manchester, man. And he's looking to do the business. I just think he's being a little bit naive, if you ask me, man, as far as what what direction his career is going. And he's super, de super deluded by thinking that Eddie Hearn is going to be there for him, even if he loses. It's, it's not, it's, it's not going to work that way. Um, he just has a significant task in front of him, and uh, I, I don't know, man. I, I just it's just it's just tough, man. His career from fucking Probellum to whatever he was doing after, and Eddie Hearn, and I don't know, but he's made some good money. I hope he makes good money for this fight, which he should. And if he wins, good, because then I think Eddie Hearn will keep working with him. But if he loses, Regis Progress is going to be in a horrible position. 
Because where does he go? Who's going to want to sign Regis Progre? Anyway, y'all keep cool. Shout out to the veterans all seven continents, man. Um, I think after the fight, in hindsight, I think Regis is going to regret maybe not really taking um, taking Catarella serious. I think he should because, God damn it, I mean, it's all on the line. It's all on the line. And he wants to stay active. If he wins, he'll stay active. If he loses, he won't be active. And I think that'll be the end of his career. Just my opinion. He'll be a gatekeeper after this fight. Keep cool him in the breeze.